Hey guys, this is Josh here with Trillium Wild Edibles and these white flowers you're looking at are yarrow. This is an extremely beautiful summertime plant. This plant's kind of hard for people to find. The main reason is because it's very inconspicuous. You usually don't even notice it. One of the best ways to notice yarrow is those very bright white flowers. They stick out very well the time of year that yarrow usually blooms. In my area, yarrow usually flowers usually starting at the middle of May and it'll flower all the way until September in my area and I live in Indiana so that should kind of give you an idea of when yarrow will flower in your area there are a lot of different varieties of yarrow the wild kind like you see here is going to have a white flower usually people will grow this ornamentally at their house and you'll see all kinds of different colors like pinks and reds and blues and such you might even see some white within those as well I don't know if those have the same uses medicinally however they are a form of yarrow, but for safety, it's best to go ahead and use the wild version of yarrow like you see here, this beautiful white flowered version. Anywhere you find one yarrow plant, you're most likely going to find some more. For example, if we take a look at the ground around us right now, we're going to notice a whole bunch of yarrow leaves. And you can see some small yarrow plants here getting ready to bud and start flowering. You can see more of these leaves here. If we look back here, we can see another plant getting ready to start flowering soon. Yarrow has very distinct leaves. The leaves are very finely cut. You'll notice all of these little bitty leaflets running down the stem. Now in your field guides, you're going to be kind of warned about the differences between yarrow and Queen Anne's lace and hemlock. And some of your field guides are going to warn you against using yarrow or Queen Anne's lace if you're a beginner forager. And in my opinion, I don't really quite understand that logic. It's good that they're doing it and trying to keep you to be safe. But, poison hemlock doesn't really look anything like yarrow in my opinion. Yarrow's leaves, as you can see, are very fine, very delicate. They have superbly deep cuts. You can see just how delicate these leaves really are. I call these leaves lacy because to me they remind me of like Victorian lace. They're very fine and almost fringe-like. Yarrow has a really nice growth pattern in the sense that the leaves all grow alternating of each other. You'll notice that the leaves alternate all the way up this plant. The stem of yarrow is rather fuzzy. It's kind of stiff and almost woody, if you will. Here you might be able to see the fuzz on the stem. It kind of resembles like a woolly covering, if you will. It kind of makes the stem feel... whoops. It makes the stem of the plant feel kind of soft to the touch, which is really nice. Yarrow can grow to varying heights. You will find yarrow plants all the way up to three feet tall. You can see like this one here, this one's about three feet tall. I usually don't find them getting much larger than this in my area, though you might where you live. You can see this little smaller one here growing up that's getting to start flowering. And as this plant grows, it's going to continue to grow a little taller and taller until it reaches its end size which is only maybe another foot and a half maybe for this one. Yarrow has a long history of uses all across the world dating back several thousands of years. The plant is named after its supposed discoverer Achilles. Its Latin name is Achillea millifolium. And it, like I said, it derives that name from Achilles, its supposed discoverer, who was said to have used yarrow on his troops to heal sword gashes and sword wounds. That's one of the many properties of this plant, or one of the many benefits of this plant, is that you can use it as a pain reliever, you can use it to stitch up wounds, so to speak. Uh, the plant is such a good astringent, it'll contract the skin so much that it'll actually help seal up rather deep wounds. The plant not also heals pain, but it's also anti-inflammatory. It's also antibacterial, so while at the same time you're healing your cut, you're cleaning it out, and you're reducing swelling anywhere near the trauma area. So that's a really good benefit to this plant. As far as using yarrow, you can use the entire herb. The entire above ground part of the plant is supposed to be used. You can use the stems, the leaves, the flowers, and the flower buds. Another good thing about yarrow is you can use it any time of the year that you find it growing. You know, so if in the early spring all you find are these leaves, just gather up several of them and you can go ahead and use those to make yourself a yarrow tea. You can use those to make tincture. You can use those as a poultice, if you will. You can use these for several different things. You can use them for salves or balms even. You can even use it in shampoos and soaps. You can use yarrow for a number of things. 
A quick note of caution though with yarrow, yarrow does contain two hone. The fresh plant contains the most two hone. After it's dried, the two hone is released. Two hone is known as the active compound with an absinthe. Two hone exists in very large quantities in plants like wormwood as well. And those kind of plants are known because of their effects. Two hone can kind of make you feel really drunk. And it can, if you take too much, make you hallucinate. So that's something to keep in mind. So whenever you make your yarrow tea or your yarrow tincture, it's a good idea to use the dried plant. However, using some of the fresh plant won't hurt too much because the two hone and yarrow will get dissolved by steeping it in hot water. So that's something else to keep in mind. Unfortunately though, yarrow is rather bitter in taste, so if you make a tea out of it, kind of be cautious of that. Yarrow does have its own distinct smell, though in my opinion it's really hard to describe. It's very aromatic when you smell it, kind of smelling almost like some sort of perfume. There's an astringency to it, or like a tannic smell. I don't think this plant actually has tannins, but it reminds me of the smell of whenever I'm leaching acorns. So if you've ever leached acorns, you might know what that smells like. But it smells very, very good whenever you crush the flowers or the leaves or even the stem. You can crush any part of the plant in your fingers, crush it and rub it between your fingers and then take a smell. And you're going to smell this really aromatic smell that, like I said, is really hard to describe. You have to find this plant and smell it, then you'll know what I'm talking about.